Welcome to the Michelle Clark Hearn Show on GoBearCats.com, YouTube, and Cincinnati Bearcats social media. Joined now by Cincinnati women's basketball head coach Michelle Clark Hearn. And uh, coach, I think we got to start this off just uh, talking about uh, how the uh, the challenges of 2020 and uh, just dealing with the, the circumstances of 2020 continue. Uh, your team now has had almost as many games either postponed or changed opponents as you've had total games on the season. We saw it again uh, this weekend. Fortunately, the ECU game was able to be moved from Saturday to Sunday, but uh, it's always a case of uh, be ready and be ready to adjust. Yeah, I think you said it right, and I think that's something that we're just trying to make sure as a staff that we're just uh, every single day just making sure that uh, we're preparing our team and just talking to them about that and just making sure that they understand and know that uh, every moment we just have to be ready because there could possibly definitely be a change. So, uh, yeah, just was excited to have the opportunity to play the game uh, because that's what this team needs. We're growing every day. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just want uh, everyone to keep remembering we sure lost a lot last year in those four seniors. Uh, and, you know, we're just getting better and better every day and we just have to keep growing. And so uh, just always, always a blessing to be able uh, during this time to be able to play. Uh, so I think that's something that, you know, we talk about a lot to our team. Uh, to the players about just being grateful for the opportunity. So, um, and for us on the other end as coaches, we just got to continue to keep being patient and try to get better each and every day. Let's take a look at uh, that game against uh, ECU uh, on Sunday. Um, a, a tough loss for your team uh, at home. This is an ECU team that uh, is much appreciated. And uh, first, I think we have to uh, give our compliments to uh, Lashada Bunk, who had a 30 point performance. And uh, she's somebody who's really developed from being a prime defensive player, not only in the league and nationally, but uh, she's really upped her offensive game as well. Yeah, she's just a competitor. She's a big time player uh, who always, like you said, uh, just defensively, just everywhere on the floor. And, uh, you know, she can shoot the three. She can get to the basket. She's a big, strong body, can finish. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, uh, hats off to her. She had a great game. Uh, made some big, big plays at the end. Uh, you know, we were uh, in the game and only down uh, with three, with a minute and 38, I think, on the clock. And, uh, you know, she's made big shots. She went to the free throw line, made free throws. And, uh, again, that's something I feel like that we have to do. We have to clean up, uh, you know, our ability to make smart decisions and be a little more disciplined on the floor as far as not turning it over and committing fouls. I think also, you know, you talk about uh, opportunities. We also have to talk about uh, the opportunities that have uh, presented themselves uh, to, to some of your younger players. I mean, we knew that was going to be the case coming into this season with uh, that big senior class uh, that graduated. Um, it, it kind of added to it uh, here on Sunday when you had uh, two starters uh, that were out, both uh, Adea Moore and Destiny Hamer. And that uh, allowed some uh, minutes, some extra opportunities uh, for a lot of your other young players. Yeah, and I take my hat off to them. Uh, a lot of those players haven't been in those positions before. Uh, you know, I had hey, – let's just start first with Jaden Scott, how much she's improved and how she can just continues to get better and better. You know, she's a post player that uh, can guard on the perimeter, can uh, switch off on a guard or a post, uh, and it's just really elevated her game. So just really proud of her uh, and just how she's getting up and down the floor, how she's challenging herself to be better and better. So – uh, the growth is incredible. And then, you know, Jillian Hayes, who, uh, you know, is just getting better and better every game, just uh, strong, uh, you know, and can, is playing that guard spot, uh, but rebounds and just is uh, working really hard to just getting better and understanding the speed of the game. Yeah, we saw both of those players really uh, step up uh, here, uh, not only during that game, uh, against the, Mar the Marquette uh, game as well. Central Michigan on the road. It seems like every game out there, they're setting some kind of new high, whether it's you know points per game, rebounds per game, minutes per game. And that, that's what you want to see at this point in the season. We're only a handful of games in with all the, the adjustments that have gone along. Obviously, you're, you're just looking for that progress every time out. Well, and I think what we talk to everyone about on this team right now, and as, as you said, you know, we had Destiny uh, and AD out this past uh, game. Uh, you just got to be ready when your number's called. And I'll, I'll take my hat off to, you know, again, Sophia and Caitlin Wilson. And, you know, we had to play a lot of people and put them in different positions. And uh, to give them a lot of credit, they stepped up and did a lot of good things. And uh, I know those minutes will continue to carry over and help them uh, along the way this season. Imari Thomas uh, continues uh, to have a great senior season, to, to say the least. That might be the understatement uh, of the year. Uh, 
only saw her uh, uh, points per game total uh, decrease by one, uh, despite having to face double teams, triple teams uh, all day. And we mentioned that, uh, you know, on the broadcast this year, the fact that she's putting up all these points is impressive. But when you look at how hard she's having to work to get each and every point, that, that really adds to it and how impressive she's been. Yes, and I think as a staff, that's something that, you know, we're trying to really focus on and make sure that we can continue to help uh, her not have to be in that position. But when you're a great player and, uh, you know, you're going to get doubled, uh, you're going to get, uh, you know, and she's working really hard. The thing that I'm so impressed with her about is she's not getting frustrated. She's just continuing to keep working and, you know, she's worked really hard. So now she can play on the perimeter some and put the ball uh, on the floor and, and be able to get to the basket. And so just expanding and growing her game has really helped her also too. And now our job as a staff is to continue to keep getting these young players better uh, each and every day uh, so they can help her uh, more on the floor in game situations. When we look uh, at some uh, expansions of uh, your team's play too, I think one positive we saw in this uh, ECU game here on Sunday was uh, it seems like the three-point shooting is starting to come along. We saw a uh, Caitlin Wilson knock a couple down. Uh, we saw some other players uh, able to hit those from deep, but that's uh, an aspect that maybe uh, hasn't been working out for you in the, in the first few games. But not only that, as the three-point shots start to fall, you'd have to imagine that's maybe going to make things a little bit easier for Imari inside as well. Well, it definitely will, and I think that's something uh, as a coach and staff, uh, you know, we have to continue. You have to understand who we are. Uh, but, you know, Caitlin Wilson definitely can really, really shoot the ball. Uh, and it's going to be one of those ones that uh, for us definitely needs to be on the floor uh, so she can stretch that defense. And like you said, uh, they have the opportunity for uh, Imari uh, not to be able to get doubled. And so uh, we'll continue to keep working on these things. I think the most important thing for us is to clean up and get better uh, at the things that we know we have to uh, and to become uh, a better all-around team defensively and doing the things that we need to do. Another thing that we talked about uh, in the postgame uh, yesterday was your team faced deficits uh, a number of times during the game that were double digits, and you were able to, to come all the way back either to, to make it a one-possession game. You took the lead on a couple of occasions, and you know you found yourself uh, within three, I think with about a minute and a half to go, and you had a chance to, to shoot a three to tie the game at that point. I know not the result you were looking for, but – for young players to to experience that early on, I imagine that has to, to be a positive for them to know, hey, we're never out of a game. We've done this before. Well, I think it's definitely a positive, and I think the biggest positive uh, is also, too, uh, is being able uh, to have Mari on the floor and talking with them and expressing to them about, you know, making sure that we do get the stops when we need to when they're huddling up on the floor. Uh, so I think it's really important, and I think it's just something that, you know, uh, as a staff, we just have to continue to keep working on work on situations as much as we can in practice, getting them to understand, uh, you know, uh, how fast a minute and 38 can go on the floor. Uh, if you've never been in that position or you, you don't understand that. And so, you know, we're trying to make sure that we can do uh, everything we possibly can in practice uh, without practice players, but in situations where we can uh, get them prepared and ready. Now that we are about, you know, a handful of games in the season here, how do you think uh, your team has matured the most, has improved the most uh, from what you've seen? Well, I think uh, we just talked about it. I think about, uh, you know, the young ones that have faced like uh, a lot of uh, adversity early on. Uh, I think they've learned uh, to be in a position where they continue to trust and just work hard. And uh, our job is to continue to just keep helping them elevate their game. I think that's the most important thing. I think, um, you know, we just have to make sure that we're breaking the game down to get them to understand how close we really are. Uh, you know, uh, as you said, coming back and working really hard and then giving up uh, or fouling or giving up easy shots or, uh, you know, in that particular moment, not following the scout on a particular player. So I think all these things have, uh, we've gotten better uh, every game. Uh, but it, it's going to come a time where we got to now uh, start putting all of that together so we can get in the win column. I think another aspect uh, in which your team has improved that I know we've discussed this season is uh, just getting out to better starts uh, during games. We saw that, you know, the first couple games of the season. What you're, you're going to see in most any year, sometimes the shots just aren't falling in the early games early on. Uh, but these last two games uh, against Central Michigan and uh, against ECU, your team uh, did a lot better in the first quarter than we've seen in the previous games. 
Well, and I think it's something that as a staff, we're trying to make sure that we can put our pinpoint and put our finger on on what is that. Uh, we all know uh, Emari uh, Thomas is one of the best players, uh, you know, on the floor. So making sure that she get touch, that she can get touches early uh, and then also just making sure that we're having some balance and making sure we have continuity going uh, in our offense. But the most important thing, we try to hang our head on defense and uh, we're getting better. We still have to uh, be able to lock down and, and get more stops in that first quarter uh, because I think it's really important in how it sets the tone for the rest of the game. Well, for all of, the, all of us who have watched every game this year, I think it's pretty clear this team uh, already a different team than we saw in game number one against Northern Kentucky. And I'm sure with the young team, that's going to continue to develop uh, throughout the season. So uh, that's we'll look forward to following that. <laughs> that is definitely our hope, and uh, that's something that we're working on every single day. Um, and I think the patience and uh, trust in the process uh, is something that I continue to keep saying to myself every day. Uh, I know um, as coaches, uh, we always look at, uh, you know, the wins and losses, and uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I also, the staff and I just want to make sure that we're looking at our growth uh, and, and what that looks like, not only on the court, but off the court. Um, these young ladies have been through a lot. Um, you know, Tuesday uh, uh be our last game before Christmas, uh, and I'm looking forward to them uh, having a chance to go and visit with their families uh, because, uh, you know, we've been here on campus since June. Um, they've, they've done a phenomenal job. Uh, and doing the things that we need for them uh, to do for we can have the opportunity to play. Uh, and so um, I just want uh, us to be able to keep uh, progressing and getting better. Uh, and so to be ready to come out here uh, tomorrow uh, against uh, USF and, and, and put on a good, uh, uh, put a good game plan together and be ready to go. Well, Coach, speaking of USF, uh, let's take a look uh, at that game uh, coming up tomorrow. Uh, the Bulls certainly have uh, put themselves kind of uh, with the target on their backs uh, at the top of the conference uh, with their performance uh, early in this season. A, a big win over Mississippi State. They're a team that's, you know, kind of been there, done that over the last decade in the American. And it looks like uh, after a year of, of having some some young players, the last two years, they've kind of all matured together, as we saw with your team with that uh, senior class last year. But uh, they're uh, rolling on all cylinders right now. They are rolling on all, all cylinders. And I think you said it, said it right. Uh, you know, went back and uh, was watching the game, um, of course, from last year when we played here. And, uh, you know, just the uh, ability, uh, like you said, for us as an older group, much more mature, had seniors on the floor. We found a way to gut it out and get that win. Uh, and like you said, they had uh, a lot of freshmen on the floor. They had some injuries. Uh, so now, like, I feel like everyone uh, is going through a lot of similarities with the pandemic going on. Uh, but, you know, now we're in that position with a young team. Uh, so I also understand and know um, that not only are we young and have a lot of new faces, I know we have uh, Mari, which is a great uh, situation to be in as a head coach, uh, to have the preseason player of the year, uh, co-preseason player of the year on your team. So now our job is to continue to put everything around them. But uh, going back to South Florida, they just, man, they've competed and had a lot of great games. They took Baylor to the war, beat Mississippi State, uh, you know, went to Memphis and won. Uh, and they just have a lot of – their guard play is phenomenal. They can shoot the three. Uh, they know they run a ton of sets. Uh, they know what they're looking for. Uh, they play the defense uh, that he plays. And uh, they just have that uh, structure of what they do. And they're really good at it. And so uh, you're going to have to make sure you take care of the basketball. You got to make shots. They make you make shots uh, the way they play. Uh, and then you got to make sure that you're guarding the three and guarding the, uh, the guards in transition. And they also have posts. And they're one of the best rebounding teams in the league. Yeah, they've always been the strength uh, of USF. You know, they're always going to rebound. You know, they're going to shoot the three. And uh, that's something they've been doing uh, very well this season uh, and has put them in the top 25. Well, uh, Coach, should be a good one uh, coming up uh, tomorrow at Fifth Third Arena. It'll be a 2 p.m. Uh, start time uh, for uh, those who want to tune in. Uh, we'll have the broadcast uh, for you on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, a big game um, here coming up right before the holidays and a chance for your team to get some momentum. Yeah, we're looking forward to it always. And like I said, just trying to get some momentum and uh, go out of here on, on, a, on a good note uh, for Christmas. Well, certainly a lot to be excited about given uh, what we've seen uh, in conference play uh, over the last couple of years and uh, a lot uh, to come here for this team this year. Well, Coach, 
We appreciate your time. Uh, always great catching up with you. And we will uh, see you at Fifth Third Arena tomorrow for the big game against USF. Thank you so much and have a great day. All right. That's it, Coach Michelle Clark Kerr. I want to thank everybody for tuning in here to another edition of the Michelle Clark Kerr Show. Again, Cincinnati and USF coming up at Fifth Third Arena Tuesday afternoon. It'll be a 2 p.m. start. And we'll have the broadcast for you on ESPN+. Plus. So for Car Co Coach Clark Kerr, I'm Matt Noonan saying so long, and we'll see you next time.